We are tonight's entertainment. What the fuck is this, Chet? Mm-hmm. This is a tasty burger. Were you rushing or were you dragging? You like Huey Lewis in the news? Is this your homework, Larry? Film school. <laughs> <laughs> you sit, trying to sit down quietly just now <laughs> was so funny. Yeah. Don't worry about that. <coughs> Welcome right. back to the Film Scoop. Film Scoop. Film Scoop. We're back. We've got soft serve coming on all your... All fronts. All cool movies. Batten down the hatches. Yeah. Fortify your mind! Because <laughs> <laughs> we're about to go crazy. Yeah. Um, last episode was Oppie. <laughs> Yep. And we talked about our Nolan rankings. Yeah, big episode. Big yeah, episode. big, long, almost three hours. Yeah. Almost the length of Avengers Endgame. Fucking call me St. Nick, dude. I'm just delivering, delivering, <laughs> delivering gifts to everybody. Goods. Yeah. Yeah, so this week we're back. We're going to talk a uh, main event here is Turtles. Yeah. Heroes in a Half Shell, you know, we could call it if you, we could if call you it wanted that. to. Um, or Ninja Rap. Tiny Shreks. Yeah. Um, we could call it many things. But yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves, yeah. dude. So, um, <coughs> we're going to talk about what we watched this week, and then we're going to talk about Turtles. Pretty simple. Yeah. No music game this week. I picked the song out. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. I, thought, you, I thought you had, you had it ready. ready. I did. If you have it ready, then you can play it. But if it's going to take 25 seconds, I've got it ready. then don't play it. And it was an easy one. All right. Okay. Do I it. guess it'll just be me. Baby driver. Yep. All right. <laughs> it, moving on. <laughs> Hell of a game. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't think there's any news to cover. So yeah, I think we got everything uh, from the last last one. Yeah. I mean, there was a Saw X trailer, but what do you want me to say? It looks like a new Saw movie. Yeah. I don't. I, there's nothing. There's looks nothing like, like uh, interesting about it to say because yeah. they're not doing anything different. It just looks the exact same, and if it's another seen, Saw movie. If you've seen a truck stop bathroom, then you've seen all truck stop bathrooms. Exactly. You know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so nothing really to say about that. Uh, the Exorcist trailer came out, uh, the new one. I think it kind of looks bad, but the score goes hard. That little Exorcist it, fucking theme song goes nuts. Yeah. I think it looks like hot garbage. I think it looks worse than the new Saw trailer. Um, I think it just to me it just reminds me of like what the Halloween movies were David Gordon Green just to me doesn't have a style and it's his movies just come off very like bland and like anyone could direct them and I guess there's nothing in the trailer that I could point out and say that specifically looks bad I just think it looks kind of dull and it just looks it doesn't look like anything really interesting or new yeah, I mean, there's there's not like ooh gross, but it just it looks it just looks like it kind of follows normal horror movie tropes. Yeah, there's not gonna be a lot of special stuff. They also I don't know I don't know why, but they brought in the mom from the first Exorcist, and they're like, well, you have experience with this, and she doesn't have any experience with it. She just yeah. existed while other guys came in and fixed the problem. Yeah, she just knows what possession looks like. So unless she became a fucking nun. In the time that Dude. her daughter got exercised. Yeah, she isn't really much of a help. <clears throat> yeah. She's like, well, I do have experience. She's going to be there, and then they're going to be, be like, okay, so what did you do at this point? And she's going to be guy. like, oh, I called that guy. <laughs> yeah, I called yeah. the priest. Yeah. Uh, call him. Oh, that guy's dead. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> like, there's, she didn't do anything. She yeah, just stood really there. banking on that first thing working yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it looks great, yeah. but I think I got to interesting idea this would be what i would do if i had to reboot the exorcist franchise i would tell the story through a priest and i would not make the movie about like one case about a person being possessed but i would have it be through the perspective of an like i guess an exorcist that's what you would call it right like someone who professionally does exorcisms they're they're just priests so what's the exorcist like the in in the movie The Exorcist, who is the Exorcist? I think the Exorcist is a thing. Like you you do an exorcism to get the demon out. <clears throat> yeah, you do an exorcism. Yeah. But an exorcist is a th- is a person. I don't know. 
It is. I'm telling you. Then then why are we why are we even talking about it? Because I just want, I was trying to clarify. You asked me, and I'm just telling you. The Anyways, guy, the guy was a priest. There's no person that does exorcisms that isn't a priest, except for well, apparently it's, you don't have to be one or the other. Um, the guy from whoever the real life conjuring guy. You is can be a priest name. and an exorcist. If you're in a priest and you do exorcisms, then you're an exorcist. I'm saying the only exorcist that exists that isn't a priest is the guy from The Conjuring, the real-life guy from The Conjuring. So that it's never happened before. And he's still, they just acknowledge that he's done them before. Well, anyways, I would tell the, <clears throat> the story through the perspective of the priest and have him go to many different, like, cases and... And show the toll it takes on him and how it affects his life. I feel like that would be a more interesting approach than yeah. just doing another case. Another, yeah. oh, these girls are possessed. Yeah. Ooh. If the option to just not do it wasn't there, then yeah. That'd be yeah, cool but, to do it. you know, obviously <laughs> that's what I would do is just yeah, not do Yeah, I think that one. would be cool. But if, if they... Make it more of a case study and then not even about the the uh, victims, but the, the guy. Yeah. yeah, about the guy doing it and the toll yeah. it takes on him. I feel like that would be interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's... There may have been another trailer, but I, I think that's about it. I know the Mortal Kombat 1 Mortal trailer Kombat came out, which trailer. you've been watching. Yeah, I watched it again this morning. Nice. Yeah, it's... Big fan. It looks so awesome. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm getting that shit for sure. <laughs> um, But yeah, I think that's about it. So we'll roll into what we've been watching. Okay. Uh, Swiss Army Man. Swiss Army Man. Excuse me, that was rude. Um, that was cool. Swiss Army Man. Yeah, we watched that. That was um, part of my film raffle. So I was recommended that by a person. So I had to watch it. I didn't have to. I could have said no, but that's rude. So I watch whatever someone recommends me, I'm going to watch it. Because yeah. I would want them to do that for mine. So I watched Swiss Army Man, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. I it didn't did really too. stick around with me too much. Like, it's not like something I kept thinking about. I think the music's really interesting and good. Uh, most of it is, either most of it or all of it, is acapella. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense, because it's like, you know, this person on an island that has no outside, you know, like, connection. So, the only music he would hear is, like, stuff he thinks of and he creates in his head. Mm -hmm. So, that makes sense, and it, it works for the story, and it was cool to listen to. But the song called Finale that plays at the end is really good. Yeah. I added it yeah. to my phone. It's, it's fucking sick. Um, but the performances are good. And it's got times where it's funny. It's not too long. Um, it's, it explores some interesting themes that I liked. But overall, it just... There's nothing really wrong with it. I just it didn't really do a whole lot for me. I enjoyed it. But I probably wouldn't watch it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. You can really tell, like, when you watch that, and then you watch everything everywhere. You like, you can tell these guys. You know, There's connective tissue. Yeah, it, it feels like this is something that the guys who made everything everywhere would make early in their career. Yeah. There's before they had the resources yeah, to like the over expand. the top funny like story exploring deep telling, themes in yeah. a silly way. Yeah. Yeah. That's. That's what that's their shit. Yeah, but um, it just for some reason I didn't connect to it as much as I did like everything everywhere all at once. Yeah, the idea of like just you know not really being able to be yourself in society versus you know a mom and daughter kind of being estranged. Mm -hmm. Um, I I definitely prefer yeah that story more than the other one. Yeah, and I did like <laughs> how it was saying how. If we explained the way the world works to someone that doesn't know what it is, it wouldn't make any sense to them. Yeah. Like how he was explaining how you don't fart in front of people. And he's like, why not? Like, what's wrong with it? Isn't it like a normal thing to do? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, so why don't we do it in front of people? And he's like, you just don't. And it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. And he would he would talk about stuff like that all the time and explain the ways of the world and to this person that you know, doesn't have any experience and none of it makes sense to him. So yeah, I thought that was interesting too, but yeah, I gave it a three. I, I enjoyed it, but it's not anything I'd probably revisit. Yeah. I think I gave it a little bit higher than I think I gave it a three and a half, just mm -hmm. a, a touch higher, but it was right. good. I liked it. And, um, then I watched casino. Hell yeah, you did. I kind of whipped it out for this one because it was like nine o'clock 
when I started it. <clears throat> and it's three hours long. So, you know, I'm, it, was, it was pretty impressive. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I get tired. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, I got to start long movies early. Yeah, I don't normally night. start a three-hour movie unless it's like six o'clock. Um, but yeah, I started it and I have the 4K. I got the 4K for like six or seven bucks. And oh, yeah. It just looks so good. But yeah, it's really fucking good. Oh, yeah? You liked it? Yeah. It's really good. Um, it's sort of like Goodfellas. It's kind of the same idea. It's like a... Uh, uh, spans a long period of time and tells a story of like these characters and their relationships together and the hijinks they got up to you mm -hmm. know and there's really nothing you can say that's like really wrong with it it's it's directed perfectly the sh the scenes in the casino just look gorgeous because there's so many like neon signs and lights and it just looks so good yeah. so much fun to watch and then the characters are really interesting. Like, there's a scene where Robert De Niro gets upset that there's not enough uh, blueberry blueberries in his muffin. <laughs> and he goes to the kitchen. He runs the casino, so he goes into the kitchen of the casino, and he's like, now you listen to me. When you're making these muffins, I want every single muffin to have the same amount of blueberries in them. Not one more, not one less. The same amount for every single one, or you're fired. And I was like, fuck yeah. yeah. This is like Nightcrawler. But yeah. Like, just a, a weird, a weirdo. But, yeah, yeah I, I liked it a lot. Um, I gave it a four and a half. Fuck yeah. It's just, I, I feel like I reserve <clears throat> five star ratings for things that really connect with me. Yeah. And this is one of those things, it's like, it doesn't really connect with me, but it, it's so perfectly made and I enjoyed watching it and... So it's not as bad as a four, but it's not as good as a five. So I just put it right there. It's like the yeah, it's, it's like the salt. It's the safe spot for really good movies that just aren't really tailored yeah, to you. They're not quite elevated to. A yeah, super like level. I gave The Dark Knight Rises a five, and that is not a better movie than Casino, but it's just more for me. It's it's you tailored it five to star? me. Uh, yeah, I have all Holy three cow. Dark Knight trilogy five star. Hell yeah. It's yep. pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Best, best trilogy Pretty wacky, made. but pretty cool. Yep. And then the next day I watched Malignant again. Oh, the rewatch. Rewatched Malignant. Heck yeah. Uh, Is it just as awesome as it was before? No, better. Better? Yeah. Oh, I had it yeah. at a three and a half. And oh. now it's a four and a half. Whoa. Same Whoa. score as Casino. Dude, it's so fucking good. I think I've I want to do like an episode four. on it around Halloween. Like spooky season, we'll we'll talk go into detail about it. Oh yeah, uh, you'll rewatch it and like see if your thoughts have changed or whatever. But it's so fucking good. I remember when we watched it in theaters, we thought about walking out because we the trailers portray it as a serious James Wan horror movie. That's yes. it. It's yep. it's just straight up. It looks like something like The Black Phone, just like a straightforward horror movie. And so we went in and we were like, dude, this is weird. Like, this is kind of bad. The acting <laughs> feels weird. The yeah. writing feels weird. And then there's a reveal halfway through. And then the tone in the movie completely changes into something else. And when you rewatch it, knowing what it turns into, then it makes everything better. Because in the first act, the first time you watched it, you're thinking, this is kind of weird. Why are they talking like that? But then knowing what happens it kind of recontextualizes everything and there's also just like a twist so then you see all the breadcrumbs of the twist and it it lines up and it makes more sense and it just feels so cohesive to me it's the camera work is off the charts there's a chase there's like a scene at the beginning of the movie where someone's being chased by like a we'll just say like a, a demon or whatever just this bad thing and it's like James Wan used this like Jane, John Wick dragon's breath angle of like the sea, the bird's eye shot of her running yeah, through the house yeah. into different rooms and then following her up the stairs <clears throat> behind her in like a one take. And it's just amazing. It's, it's incredible filmmaking and yeah. stuff like that throughout. I mean, it looks so good visually. The camera works amazing and it's so creative and original and fun. And there's like funny lines and, 
Dude, there's a fucking Where Is My Mind theme that plays. Do you remember that in theaters? I don't remember that, no. Dude, it's like whenever someone has a, a like, epiphany and they realize something, it plays this, like, electronic version of Where Is My Mind. I'm going to see if it's on Spotify, uh, if I can play it. But it's it's really fucking cool. Yeah. I remember, I remember watching it the first time and, like, once the reveal happens, you're like, I get it. I, I get what's going on here. Yeah. It, at, for me, it was a little bit before the reveal. It was like the... No, I, I, I guess it was the reveal. But it was like, all right, I get what's happening. And I think we... I watched it again. I, I've seen it twice already, and I was like, this is fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's... um, It's very... It's very campy. It's really it. fun. I found it. Oh, I do Dude, remember it's that. so yes, fucking I do cool. Remember that. Yeah. It doesn't play the where is my mind part. Yeah, it doesn't say that in the movie, the, but it just goes a dun, dun, dun. Dude, it's so fucking cool. <laughs> um yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just love that shit. And even when it's not the where is my mind theme, it's it's got this like tangerine dream kind of score almost, like the synthy like 80s John Carpenter type score yeah. and it's it's just so fucking good. It's and so it works entertaining. With the concept of the movie too. Yeah, it's so fucking entertaining. The gore, like the kills, are amazing and violent. And I remember the prison sequence, dude. Yeah, that's fucking. And there's inspired. just, it's just like, it's um, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I don't understand how people. I can understand the first watch, you being like, that wasn't what I thought it would be. But rewatching it, I don't understand how someone could not like it. That's the thing, though. I think, especially if you're a horror fan and you watch a lot of bland, basic horror movies like Annabelle and shit. Yeah. I don't see how you can watch *Malignant* and not like really love it just based on creativity alone. Yeah, I think the first watch is enough to put people off to not like. If something's I not see what that. you thought it was going to be, the average person isn't going to give it another shot under a new lens. I think it's it, going to be like that wasn't uh, that wasn't a scary movie. That was stupid, and then they're going to move on. I think Malignant almost requires a rewatch. It does. Yeah. It does. And I think that at first I thought the the average, the marketing for it kind of did it a disservice. But I mean, it, it drove me to watch it again. So well, maybe they knew what they were doing. Maybe well, they wanted to do the bait and switch. The marketing's interesting because there's two different ways to look at it. And there's like the way of how will we make the most money. That's one way to market it. And then there's also how do we create a good experience for the audience and not show them too much? Yeah. And I feel like the one they chose kind of did both because people who really like movies and don't want everything spoiled didn't get at all what the movie was from the trailer. It's a completely different movie. Yeah. But also people love straightforward horror movies. So you're selling a lot of tickets just based on people that want to go see a straightforward horror movie. Yeah. So it kind of accomplished both things. And that's kind of sick, because normally yeah. you have to choose. Normally, trailers are super spoilery and show you everything and throw everything at the trailer to get you to see it, and then you have a, sort of a bad experience, like The Flash. The Flash, there's not a scene in The Flash that's not in the trailer. Yeah. It's fucking the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'd like to talk about it more around Halloween, but I fucking loved it. Yeah, we need to get a really solid spooky season movie list. I want to like, yeah, do like a whole month... Like every week, we talk about horror movies. Hell yeah! We can like break it down to like, I don't know. We could do like a top ten horror movies of all time episode. We could do like favorite uh, horror directors or best horror sequels. Just fucking what I, I love talking about horror movies. Yeah, it's my shit. I'm really picky with horror too, so it'd be interesting to yeah have to refine myself to just horror. Yeah, I. It's it's not one of the best genres. It's got a low hit rate, but. It's just one, it's a genre I get so excited to see. Yeah. Like, yeah. when talk to, when we were on the way to see Talk To Me, I was just f fucking excited. Hell yeah. I just love watching horror movies. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And none of them really scare me. It's just fun. It's just yeah. fun to me to watch It's really them. cool to see how people are going to try and poke at you. Yeah. How people are going to try and incite yeah. that feeling. But anyway. Um, like, and then awesome. after that, yeah, I watched The Master. <laughs> and this is a movie for some backstory. Carl had seen it and I hadn't. And Carl said it's bad. And I yep. was like, 
you could be right, but it's also PTA, so maybe you were just in a bad mood and just it did it, you know, wrong time, wrong place, and you just didn't like it, and maybe it's good. And so I was like, well, I'll give it a shot. And so I, he didn't really want to watch it again. He said he would, but he didn't really want to. So I watched it alone. Yeah. And I thought, dude, I was like, if you wind up liking this, I'll I'll retire from the whole movie thing. Because usually when there's like a universally acclaimed movie that I say is boring, you wind up saying was good. And this one, I knew for sure. I was like, there's no fucking way. He gave yeah, it's a high score. this is one of those movies that sometimes I watch. A movie that I think is fairly well made, but I just don't like it. I don't enjoy watching it. And I'll give it a high score just out of respect because I know it's good. But this is one one of the first times I've, other than Stalker, it's one of the first times I've given a movie that people really, really like and just given it a horrible score because I didn't like it. Yeah. And I gave it a two and I got flamed for it. But... I just really didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy watching it. I think it's boring as shit. The performances are great. Obviously. It's Philip Seymour Hoffman and Joaquin Phoenix just sparring it out on screen. Yeah. And that's... I could watch a, a YouTube clip. Like, There's a couple scenes I could rewatch on YouTube because of the acting. But I just think the movie's boring. And technical aspects can only do so much for me when it comes to... a damn near two and a half hour movie that's just boring yeah and i don't know like there's not really too much i can say about it why i didn't like it it's there's not like some glaring issues or anything no, it's just me, it's boring. just a fucking snooze fest i don't find it interesting and it's yeah. not like it runs on too long or whatever like the first 30 minutes the whole concept of the movie i just don't really think is interesting yeah so i, I think that uh, Joaquin Phoenix's character is like super unlikable. He doesn't really have an arc that makes me like interested in him or like interested in what he's gonna do. I just like I think go, I just the intention of the person. movie was to get you to like Freddy, but I kind of didn't. Yeah, I just he's he's an alcoholic and you know like an addict and he just oh, I don't know. I think the intention was for you to come around on him and like really root for him and Philip Seymour Hoffman's character and their relationship, but I just didn't. I yeah. just didn't didn't do it for me. So, you know, I gave it a two, and I, I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah. I didn't. I mean, if you ever I need really good, didn't like it. If you ever need to get to sleep, get some good rest. Yeah. Throw it on the tube. Yeah, I mean, it's got some great cinematography and cool music and. You know, he's PTA is very good technically making movies. He's good at getting great performances and setting up shots and everything. But man, I yeah. he's not one of my favorite directors. Yeah, he's there's, really not. There's a good amount of people I would put ahead of him. Yeah, and he's a, made, an absurd amount for me that yeah. I don't want to say because people would get mad. No, me too. He's made two movies that I actually really like. Yeah. I really like, like There Will Be like Blood and Punch Drunk Love. Yeah, that's the two. Yeah, and even Punch Drunk Love, I'm not, like, in love with. I gave it, like, a four, and I enjoyed it, and it's one of my favorites of his, but... Yeah. You know. I think I like Punch Drunk Love more than you. Like, I wouldn't mind rewatching Punch Drunk Love, and, like, I enjoy the watch. I could rewatch it. I really like There Will Be Blood. Yeah. And then... That's the standout That's basically it. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's that's it about the mastery. Um, after that, we watched Talk to Me. Well, before we dive into that, I've got some solo adventures that I went on. Well, there's still more, but okay, you can go. Well, these will be quick. Um, All right. I watched Batman and Bill. Oh yeah. Yeah. What'd you think? So, I thought it was fucking awesome. This was uh, my recommendation. Yep. For the listeners, because yep, I actually watch the stuff you recommend me. No big deal. Sometimes. I haven't watched, watched Coherence. Watched just now. I haven't watched Tor. It's, I it's tried right. to watch Coherence, and then you were fucking doing your taxes or something in the middle of me trying to watch it with Logan. So I got up and left. Started doing other stuff. That's your problem. No, bro. He can't went focus. to the movie watching room. Bro's easily and distracted. Violent. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched Batman and Bill. I thought it was really good. Um, really fucking sad and honestly, yeah, really sad. Really informative too. Yeah. If you're a big Batman fan, it's it's kind of a. N- necessary viewing 
for to know his history and oh i think it's a must watch yeah for sure if you care if you give a shit about batman then i, I feel like it's it's a really good doc yeah. i don't watch a lot of docs so i don't have much to compare it to but it's, i like i like, I like it. the use of doc yeah what like instead of documentary like that, just throw on a throw on a doc i mean I that's like that. what it, they're called i haven't heard anyone call it that but i like it you don't watch a lot of like film no dude i'm off stuff. i'm off the radar but yeah. this doc was pretty fucking good yeah yeah it really like made me emotional at one point too like it was yeah it, it is really it's really good it's yeah. a really well-made documentary it tells yeah. a really really cool story um about just you know trying to get recognition to the right people it's mm-hmm. it's really interesting Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't feel like watching it, the long story short is, uh, fuck Bob Kane and shout out the homie Bill Finger. Yeah, yeah, Bob Kane's dude. A... Bo- Bob Kane's a fucking fraud, dude. Bob Kane. Did a you real see piece his his sketch of Batman? Like his thought of Batman, what that yeah. was? The fucking red suit. Yeah. What the fuck is that? That's not Batman, <laughs> dude. Bill Finger <laughs> came up with the name Bruce Wayne. He came up with the backstory. He yeah. came up with the villains. He came up with Gotham. He came up with everything. The only thing Bob Kane came up with was the name of, oh, I want to make a guy that dresses like a bat. That was it. Yeah. And Bill Finger came up with everything and yeah. got no credit. Yeah. Fuck, fuck Bob Kane. It's fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, I've also got these Batman oil paintings. And they're like, he didn't paint any. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he he, he didn't got do some shit. kind of paint it. Dude, he His didn't do shit. His whole life was shit. built on a lie. Yeah. He didn't do shit. Oh, yeah. That, that shit's crazy. But, um,. I rolled straight out of that doc into another doc called Pandora's Promise, which is about um, nuclear energy. Ah. And um, that one, I could see the majority of people not liking as much as Batman and Bill. (laughs) I thought it was really interesting. You kind of get to see the two sides of the political spectrum. You get like the super far left, like hippie side that is anti-nuclear and only wants wind and solar and and, like kind of like big oil companies peddling that nuclear is bad but in reality it's because they're the backup for wind and solar and then you got the people on the far right side that's like pro nuclear that's like oh, it's not that bad you know uh not gonna lie you're talking gibberish right now you got no <laughs> idea what you're talking just about. nuclear power plants and then they'll be like chernobyl wasn't as bad as what people make it out to be you know nuclear is safe but that's that's the whole the whole documentary is just you know the dilemma of using nuclear energy and how no one can really decide on what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I watched Cliffhanger, <laughs> which was a really big step in a different direction <laughs> from the two documentaries. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Cliffhanger was a good time. I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, Cliffhanger's fun. I have yeah. Cliffhanger on Blu-ray. I like yeah. it. I've had it forever, and I was like, you know what? I need to finally fucking watch this. Yeah, it's fun. It's underrated. Yeah, it I like is. It. it is. I liked the very. I knew exactly what it was going to be in the very beginning when that lady's harness completely untied itself by magic. Classic. I was like, "This is what we're doing." <laughs> I, I like it. I like That's it. what's happening. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was really good. Yeah, that was all your solos. Yep, that was my solos. All right. Um, talk to me. Talk to me about so, talk to me. This was fucking sick. Yeah, that's I what I'll awesome. say. Um, it was gnarly. Um, I gave it a four. We're rewatching it in about two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, good horror movies are hard to come by nowadays. Normally, if you're lucky, you'll get like two a year yep. that are genuinely good. You'll and get forty that come out. <laughs> yeah, forty that come out. About two that are good. So that's a you know a solid ratio right yeah. there. Solid percentage. Um, it was directed by two YouTubers uh, that I don't watch. I'm not familiar with them, but they're pretty popular. And Australian film. All the actors are Australian, and uh, that's pretty sick that the YouTubers are Australian and they got to like make it in their you know hometown with you know Australian actors. That's pretty mm-hmm. sick. They didn't have to like. I heard that it was kind of hard for them to get it made because companies wanted like to bring it to America and have it star American actors. And they kind of stood their ground and said, no, like we're going to make this the way we want to. And Hell yeah. they finally got it made and it's fucking sick. Um, the lead performance by Sophia Wilde is amazing. Oh, I heard one geez. person in a review say, uh, she holds her own. And I was like, 
fuck you. She doesn't hold her own. She's amazing. Yeah. She's really good. She's the entire movie. And yeah, he must have been watching some other movie because what I saw was a yeah. really good fucking actress. Yeah, she's tromping yeah. around and fucking making me buy she into everything. She carries the movie. She's really fucking good. The opening scene's great. Um, it doesn't have a lot of jump scares, which I like because jump scares never really get me, and I find them cheap. They can be done well, but normally they aren't. Ninety percent of the time, they aren't, and. Um, I, I tend to prefer more just creepy atmosphere and overall creepiness than, you know, like The Shining, for example, doesn't have jump scares to my knowledge. It may be one, but that movie thrives off of just eerie atmosphere and creepiness Yeah, and I like great writing. Yeah. I like when a movie can get me in that feeling of just like uneasiness of like, yeah. this, this isn't good. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's coming, but yeah. something and, bad's going to happen. And I know there's some jump scares in Hereditary, but mainly that movie's creepy because of the, you know, the atmosphere and the overall vibe. And yeah. this is kind of one of those where there's one or two jump scares, but it's mainly about, it's mainly through people's performances. Like, there's, Sophia Wilde's amazing, and also the kid who played Riley, I think his name's Joe Bird. Yeah. He was really fucking good and really une like made me feel really uneasy. Really, I thought everyone did a fantastic job. Yeah. It's a really um, well acted. Her movie. friend, uh her friend's mom. Mm -hmm. Like everyone is reacting in a very natural yeah. way to, to what's going on. Like yeah. I, I I bought into it instantly. Yeah. And even the, the two kids that are just there to like party, I was like, Yeah, those are those are real people. Yeah. Everything, every, all the characters felt very natural. They pretty much all made, like, reasonable decisions. There wasn't, like, the trope of people making horrible decisions so you don't feel bad for them. The characters are really good, and you are invested in pretty much everybody. And it looks good visually. Uh, there's a shot in a bedroom that's really good, yeah. really well done that we talked about. Um, it's got some, like, twists, sort of. I, I I'm not. So, yeah. I'd, I'd call them twists, and there's the directors made a really interesting choice of like the character they were telling the perspect, like telling the story through, mm -hmm. and like you said when we talked about it, it was something that kind of hasn't been done before. And yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I don't want to get into spoilers and say what specifically we're talking about, but it was just very unique and well crafted and very enjoyable it never dragged for me it never felt like it got stale um so i really liked it it's my favorite horror of the year it it was a uh, evil dead rise and this trumped it for me yeah it's it's tough because like i fucking love evil dead rise and they're very different movies you know evil dead rises i would describe it as fucking awesome yeah and I don't think I would say that this movie's awesome. It's really fucking good, but it doesn't have that like a like when she fucking kicks that girl into the wood chipper. I'm like fuck yeah. You yeah, it's bitch, like yeah. Evil Dead Rise is more of like it gives me it makes me feel the way I feel when I watch action movies. Yeah, yeah. And this is more like uneasy. Yeah, that's what Evil I'm Dead Rise to... doesn't make me uneasy. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get across. Yeah, I actually think I prefer Evil Dead Rise. Really. Yeah, I think it's a lot more fun. I see myself rewatching Evil Dead Rise more than, mm. than this. This kind of has some. Uh, I mean, it's got some pretty graphic stuff. It does so. I just Very, I like having fun. I tried to. You kind of laughed at me when I said this, but um, it's very. Uh, what what was I trying to say? Um, like. It crosses lines that normally movies won't cross, and it's upsetting. That's what I said. Oh, yeah. You made I didn't fun laugh at you. I didn't make fun of you. You kind of did, but all it, I said was like, "How? Like what? You know what? What in like, specific?" And you were like, "What the fuck do you mean? It's just upsetting." And I was like, "I'm just, I'm just trying to get more information." No, That's like I'm trying to do. It's the movie makes choices that they know will upset you. And make you unhappy and be like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
a lot of movies will bitch out and they'll kill off people that you don't give a shit about. They'll, they'll intentionally add like a jock douchebag character that you can kill and no one will care. Yeah. And this movie doesn't do that. It's very like they'll do some fucked up shit to people that you like. And yeah, I get it. I was just trying to, I was trying to get you to explain yourself and you, you I just did. didn't want to. I did explain myself. Not, not in the car ride. No. I did. Cause I was trying. I to said what I just said now. I don't remember you saying that. Oh, well, you're, I remember you, you're dumb. You're a lot more coherent now, but you're, you're, when we first watched yeah, it, you were, just, dumb. you were just like, "Yeah, that movie was was this," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, what, you know how?" And you'd just be like, "Ah, oh. no, I, I explain. I said exactly you what might, I just you said. Know, you know, you know what I mean. That didn't happen though. I said what I just said. But, Anyways, uh, yeah, the movie is fucking. It's it's really good. It it's very graphic. There's one scene in particular where she sees something um, when she's trying to look for something is, is all I'll say without getting into spoilers and mm-hmm. you, you kind of get a glimpse into this this uh, like bad stuff that's yeah. going on and it's like holy shit dude they're, yeah. they're, they're really playing around with fire and they also don't really like force feed you any information like there's some things kind of left up for interpretation Yeah, which if you have a functioning brain it, it shouldn't really be like you should know oh that's what happened but it doesn't say it like it. You still have to, you know. Yeah, the dots are all there. Yeah. You just got. And the them. ending is amazing. Yeah. One of my favorite endings to a horror movie in a while. Um, very dark and like kind of leaves you with a pit in your stomach. Yeah. And it's As like I was upsetting. watching it, I was like, it would be really cool if they did this, and then they did it, and I was like, Fuck yeah, yeah, dude, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But, it was um, fucking sick. I initially had one problem with the movie and that was the the idea of this isn't this isn't the trailer so it's not really a spoiler but the idea of kids like playing with this thing and like a party and I was like you know I feel like if you're getting possessed or talking to like spirits or something like people are gonna steer clear of that and then I came to the realization like people are really fucking dumb and that's exactly what they would do. People play with Ouija boards. Yeah, it's, people pay, play with Ouija boards. Shit. They do like the 3 a.m. challenge where yeah. they, they're trying to like summon 24 spirits. hour Walmart challenge where they yeah. hide in toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They build toilet people paper forts fucking, and try not to get kicked out. Dude, people are dumb as a box of rocks. And yeah. they would absolutely, if there was something that was causing like weird shit to happen, yeah. the first Especially thing they would do the druggies is grab it and in, like, a, oh, in a high school. Works. Like the groups of people that like love doing drugs and doing crazy shit and yeah. they yeah. they'd love doing that yeah. talk to me shit so yeah I agree um after that we watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Secret of the Ooze oh my god dude gotta say the full name so people don't get confused yeah um so we watched TMNT 1 and we both like saw that there was charm to it but I it wasn't like a big childhood movie to me. I'd seen it, but it wasn't like this deep-rooted memory yeah. for me. None of these movies were childhood movies for me. I watched them for the first time this year. Yeah. So they have no nostalgia for me. And I thought the first one was like... I can see why people who grew up with it really like it, but to me it's... I don't know. It's It's got some 90s charm, but it's not really for me i don't think it's very funny i don't think they do good service to the characters yeah um and that's the thing too like if if you watch that movie and you don't know uh like who the turtles are supposed to be that's a problem yeah yeah so we we watched that first movie and that was the first time i'd ever seen a, a a like a turtle movie so i didn't know the characters and we the movie ended and i was like uh I think you said what was your favorite character and I was like oh dude Raph's my favorite character he's like he's a badass and he's the leader and you were like well he's you think he's the leader and I was like yeah that's he was in that movie <laughs> yeah. and you were like well he's not supposed to be it's supposed to be Leonardo um, and I was like well he fucking wasn't in that, in that movie I just <laughs> yeah. watched he was not the leader he wasn't and at all and you don't and you don't really get a vibe for any of the turtles in the movie. Like in that first movie, it's pretty much, uh, Raphael is just kind of the loose cannon and he likes to, you know, he's got kind of a taste for like violence and, and stuff like that. But all the other three turtles are all act the same and you can't really tell which one's which. And 
I just didn't really like that. I feel like you should watch the movie and know they should feel like teenagers and they should feel like brothers and they should have relationships and you should know which one's which. So it just wasn't really for me. I gave it a three. And um, so yesterday, or yeah, yesterday we watched the um, Secret, Secret of the of Ooze. The Ooze. And what did you think about it? So Secret of the Ooze still has the same problems as the first movie for me. It does. Um, the the turtles still blend together. You know, they all kind of act the same. They they all laugh. At the they same all feel stuff. like men doing teenagers yeah. impressions. But the step up with Secret of the Ooze is Fun. more '90s wacky shit. Yeah, and that's what I think gives it a stepping stone over the first one. There's enough. There's enough '90s fun that's like this is fucking awesome. Yeah, you remember the scene when um they're the turtles are talking to April and then uh she's like where's Splinter and he's like they're like he's on the roof and she's like what is he doing on the roof and then you see Splinter in the background go coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's coming. <laughs> yeah and then there's a scene where they they they're fighting people and then they accidentally get knocked into like a club. Yeah. And then, so there's this like party going on, and they're they're fighting these like big fucks in the middle of a party, and then Vanilla Ice starts performing "Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go." Yeah. Ninja. While they're performing, like while they're fucking fighting people, and it's just so much fun. Yeah, it's awesome. It's dude. still like you said, it's still got all the problems of the first one, but it's more fun. Yeah. And you know, I just had. I just enjoyed it a little more. Yeah. There's also a freeze frame at the beginning for the title card. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. That was, yeah. They like the turtles show up like during a, like a crime to help save the day. And they, they do like fucking kicks in the air. They all jump into the air and like do poses and then it freezes and it comes up and says teenage mutant Ninja turtles to the secret of the use. And I was I like, dude, love that shit. That I miss awesome. like opening freeze frames. It's yeah. so nineties and that's, that's the one thing I do like about them is like they're not perfect and they're not really written the best and they're not really acted the best, but they just feel so much like a product yeah. of their time. Yeah. And there's some there's some fun to be had with that. It's so. fucking entertaining as hell. That's yeah. For sure. But I still gave it the same score as one. Uh, I, I think I I gave it a little bit more than one. I think I gave it a three and a half. I gave it I gave both of them a three. That's fair. But two That's def fair. two's better to me, but they're both threes to me okay. um and skipping over the main topic uh last night i watched the pursuit of happiness i'm excited for you to talk about this that was i, I love the pursuit of yeah happiness. that was my film raffle for this week so i got recommended that and i recommended uh someone else game night because i'm a cool guy and well you also recommended someone the nice guys no i didn't I thought like last week you didn't nope. recommend. Oh, it didn't happen. I thought you recommended some of the nice guys and they gave it a two star. No, I didn't recommend. No, that guy just watched it. Oh, he just watched it on yeah. his own. He's oh. an idiot. God, what a moron! If he's listening, his name's Max Wilson. If he's listening, <laughs> you're fucking dead to me. All right, yeah. just so just yeah. so that's on the record yeah. for that nice guy's two star. That's criminal. That's yeah. you should be in prison right now. I mean, it's, everyone's different, you know. Some people like to dissect girls, you know. Some people don't like having fun. Yep. And he just doesn't like fun. Yep. It's you know, hey, he's he's one of the Chets of the world. That's <laughs> the that's Chets. what we'll say. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, it was my film raffle for the week, and I watched it last night, and it's really fucking good. Yeah. It's it's Will Smith's best performance. He kind of like disappears in the role to me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really feel like Will Smith. It feels like the character and Jaden Smith's really cute. He is, <laughs> he's, he's a adorable, really cute dude. little he's kid. Adorable. And, uh, they have great chemistry as you would expect on screen. And, um, I thought the story was like kind of formulaic. You pretty much know what's going to happen in my opinion. Um, but when it's so well acted and like kind of gripping throughout, I don't really mind um, it being formulaic. It's I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching all of it, and it never really got stale to me. And but there is times where like Chris Gardner is 
they pretty much make him out to be like not I don't want to say a genius, but like he's really smart. Yeah. He's uh he solves that Rubik's cube just by picking it up and messing around with it. He just found out what it was that it existed and he instantly like solved it. Um, and he like fixes the, um, the scanner he has, like he just looks at it and fixes it. Mm-hmm. He's, that's not even his job. He's a salesman, but he fixes it anyways. Cause it's broken. And, um, he was like first in his class in high school and he just didn't have money to go to college. So he's kind of behind, but He's a really smart character, but there's times where he just does dumb shit. And he says it in the movie because it's um, it's narrated. Like, he's narrating the movie and he says, This chapter of my life is called Being Stupid. Yeah. And then he does dumb shit. And it's like, I know that you're pointing out the fact that it was stupid, but why, like, why would someone who's smart do this? Like him leaving these scanners he has. He bought, like, 50 scanners years ago, uh, like, medical bone density scanners and now he has to sell them because he has a huge stock of them and that's the only way he makes an income and he needs to go into a building so he leaves it outside with a homeless person playing a guitar with a hippie and why the fuck like what do you think is going to happen yeah he's like will you watch this for me while i go inside like they're gonna run away with it and there's times where he does stuff like that and i'm like if you're a smart guy why are you I know he's in pressing situations and he's kind of doing things that he knows he shouldn't, but he kind of has to. But there's times where stuff like that happens and I'm like, why, why are you doing that? But yeah, other than that, it's, um, I really liked it and it kind of made me tear up a little bit. Heck yeah. Because he goes, uh, there's one I time in the bathroom. I got, no, uh, there's one time I happy cried and then one time I sad cried. And the time I sad cried was when Jaden Smith is laying in like the bed at one of the homeless shelters. And he asks his dad, uh, did mom leave because of me? Wow. And I just, I don't have any kids, but I pictured my son saying that to me and it just made me tear up. Cause I was like, and then Will Smith's like, don't you ever even think something like that? And yeah. it just, it just made me so sad that, cause that's, how kids think and you know it's just it just really made me sad that he said that yeah. um and then i happy cried at the end spoilers for the pursuit of happiness when he gets the job which yeah. i already knew because it's a popular scene yeah. and people put it in like the best acting of all time or whatever but it's just it, like he gets offered the job and he can't even really like say anything he just his eyes just start like welling up and he starts shaking people's hands and just so great so well acted and powerful and i really liked it so not like the most creative movie in the world it's you know fairly simple and by the books but really well done and i liked it yeah so i I agree with that when i watched it whenever i was a a whippersnapper a wee a wee boy yeah i was but a young lad when i watched (laughs) it and uh, i started crying when um his son lost his action figure. That was really sad. Too. I was like, "Son of a bitch, dude!" Yeah, get his act. Get a, get Captain America back. Okay? Yeah. I don't know why he got me, but when I was a kid, I was like, "I'd hate to lose my toy." Yeah, that would suck, dude. That fucking suck. <laughs> like, imagine I'm I fucking drop my Nightcrawler steelbook, and, yeah. and like my dad's pulling my arm, and he's like, "We gotta go," and I'm like, "But my Nightcrawler steelbook, like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be horrible." Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> mighty beans. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so that's the pursuit of happiness gave it a four and a half Hell yeah. thought about a four but i i enjoyed it enough to give it a four and a half yeah um and i think that's it so we can move on to the teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem yeah the the main, the main attraction yeah. here so we got uh we went to an early access screening yesterday and uh First of all, we'll just get this out of the way. The audience was dog shit. Um, there was a bunch of fucking snot-nosed kids there. <laughs> fucking runny nose, yeah. fucking light-up shoes, fucking sippy bunch cup of fucking kids there. Rugrats yeah. flying around the place. Fucking and worthless pieces of shit. Here's the deal. We, so, we didn't talk about the movie almost at all. We yeah, we wanted said, to save it. We just said it was good or, or, you know, we said, like, hey, that's good. Yeah. But we did talk in depth about the audience being Dude, fucking horrible. And, it's fucking and putrid. I understand that it's it's a Ninja Turtles movie, 
and it is geared towards kids. But at the end, like we, sometimes we give too much leeway with that because like we had a bad audience for Barbie and I was like, uh, it's, you know, it's Barbie. Like I can't really be too mad, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's a fucking movie theater. So yeah, I'd, I'd, I get that different movies should have different audiences and like our Oppenheimer screening was pitched like dead silent and it was yeah. a perfect theater experience and Barbie wasn't and those are two different demographics and I get that but at the end of the day it's still a movie theater and there's still like things that you just shouldn't do yeah and there was <laughs> there was people to the right of us that had a kid and they were talk the kid and the parents were talking the whole movie and then there was a kid to the right of us that Carl was sitting next to that had a kid that was standing in his seat and and like his, the mom was checking her phone and they were talking the whole movie. Yeah. And then there's a baby, a fucking fucking fetus in the front, like in the row in front of us that's crying the whole time. Yeah. Crying. An actual baby. Yeah. Like if I'm a parent and my baby starts crying, I'm instantly walking out into the hallway until he's not crying anymore. Yeah. This, they just sat there. They just let their baby cry during a movie. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? This, <laughs> yeah, so, what kind of Mickey Mouse operation is this? Yeah, I, I do give leeway when there's when I'm watching a movie geared towards kids and there's disruptions. There's always going to be disruptions. Yeah. But there is also a parent there that is supposed to shut that down yeah. in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And, and we were talking about... The kid that was standing up in his seat, yeah. the mom looked over and was like... What, what Nathan's so Joshua, silly. Joshua, what, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> you rascal. And then, like, that was it. And he just, he continued to fucking stand until he got tired and sat back down. Yep. But he stood up in his chair for, like, at least 20 minutes. And yep. she just let that go on. Yep. And I was like, what what kind of bizarre world are we living in right now? Fucking yeah. tell, tell him to sit his ass down. Yeah. Um, but that would have punched me in my chest. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's fucking crazy. Um... And we were talking and we were like, I get if a baby like cries, like starts crying and then the person takes it out. I'm not going to be mad at that. Like you can't help if your baby cries, like a few seconds of them crying before you get them out in the hallway. Or if a kid like randomly blurts something out and then the parents like, you know, like, shut the they're like, up. Hey, shut, like, shut it up. Like fucking <laughs> take your binky. Like <laughs> you, I don't mind when that happens cause you can't control that. But it's when your kid is acting up and you're not doing anything and you just let it keep happening. That's yeah. fucking putrid. You're in a movie theater. Yeah. It's one thing if it's like a restaurant because it's like there's no like rules that you have to be quiet in a restaurant really. It's, it's you know, polite and you should, but it's like a movie theater is the one place where you're not supposed to make noise. That in a library. But who, who gives a fuck about the library? Um, yeah. So that's my thing is like you should be doing something about it. But anyways, enough of the audience. Um, oh, and not enough of the audience. Um, people were fucking getting up and just, like, walking th in front of us the whole fucking movie. Yeah, that was... It was weird. So, the TNMT was a sneak preview. We, we watched it early. And not knowing this whenever we got there, there's no previews for the sneak preview. So, we yeah. got in, like, two minutes late, and the movie fucking started. Yeah. The, the screening was at 2, yeah, and we got there at 2.01, and it was started. And yeah. I kind of remembered that from the last time we saw Early Access, but I kind of forgot. I don't, I don't know. remember the last one we watched that was Early Access. We only access. missed like a few, like a minute, so yeah. I, it didn't really bother yeah, me. It but, didn't bother the, the viewing, but I was like, fuck, there's people that are going to show up like 10 minutes from now. Yeah. That are Assuming there's 25 trailers. minutes of trailers like yeah. that. Yeah. And we got that. We got people going in coming in like with the movie started and then it's pitch black so they have to turn on their flashlight to see where the fuck they're going and what yeah. number that they're at yeah there's nothing they could do but then there's also people that just were hanging out cruising around just taking a nice stroll through a fucking active movie theater yep classic so that was that was cool so yeah awesome. the audience fuck them uh moving on to the movie the movie's fucking sick yeah let's just get that out of the way it's amazing it's in awesome. my opinion the reception has been like good on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's still like a 97%. People really like it on Letterboxd. I'm seeing a lot of three and a halfs. So Ooh. they're not as like high on it as I am. And you are, Yeah. but maybe it's because I just watched, um, secret of the use. So I had like a direct comparison, but I think that this is by far the best turtle movie. Like, not even a discussion, in yeah. my opinion. Listen, I... Sue me. You know, lock me up. 
but I fucking love the Ninja Turtles. I didn't grow up with them. I'm I'm adopting them recently, but I yeah. really fucking like them too. I fucking love the Ninja Turtles, and I even rem- I haven't seen these in a long time. This could be totally wrong, mm-hmm. but I remember even watching the Michael Bay Ninja Turtle movies and being like. Fucking turtle, Dude, turtle time! I'm actually excited to watch those. They, <laughs> there's people that, my buddy Alex, he, um, he loves Team NT two. Like, mm-hmm. he, it's his favorite childhood movie. He has like, it's got a special place in his heart. And he despises the button, the Michael Bay movies. And they're not directed by Michael Bay. I should add, they're just produced. But they, uh, from what I hear, they feel like Michael Bay movies. Um, I can't. But, I do remember them like. Being like, oh, this is like, trans, like very similar to Transformers. Yeah. So I, I am ex- kind of excited to watch those just to see if they're as bad as people say, and there could be some cool visuals, or you know, th- it seems like it's a darker take. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm down to watch them. I, I think it could be fun. I didn't watch the second one, but I watched the first. I think I watched the first one in theaters because I fucking. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, the turtles. It's turtles. Yeah. So it's I showed up there and I was like, "Turtle time!" I had my popcorn. And I was like, "Let's fucking go!" <laughs> you <laughs> you had your popcorn yeah. in your large I said, fucking, Let's fucking Dr. Pepper. Go. And I yeah. watched it and I was like, "Those goddamn turtles! Dude. They're always getting <laughs> those, into hijinks." Those rascals. So, you know that that out of the way with me liking the turtles so much, there might be a bit of a bias, but I thought it was fucking amazing. Yeah. So we can go through like piece by piece and yeah. kind of talk about I specifics think on what we liked. The big thing that's going to stand out to most people is obviously the visuals. The, the animation looks is fucking fantastic. The animation's beautiful. And it's... A lot of people are going to say it's like a rip-off of Spider-Verse, but I think that that's lame because if you're just saying they're ripping it off by having good animation, then sure. Fucking every movie's gonna rip it off by trying to have good animation. I think it's but it's it's not really like it at all. If you kind of pay attention, it's it's more of like a sketch animation. It's a lot more comic booky feeling. the The big similarity is that it's both the kind of like stop motion feeling. Yeah, they feel jittery and yeah, low and, frame rate. But like, I, I don't know what you want people to do. Like, yeah. Spider Verse created that. So obviously people are going to see that, it, so they're gonna, and it's fantastic. Yeah. It's a good way. It's a cool way to like make things feel comic booky. Yeah. So people are going to do it, and that movie, the Mitchells versus the Machines that everyone likes, yeah. they they have the exact same animation style. I would say that Spider Verse feels like comic book, like two D comic book drawings, and this feels more like they almost sort of look like clay. If like that makes sense, hand like drawn, hand drawn clay figures, like yeah. stop motion almost. Yeah. That's kind of how it looks. Yeah. So, I don't think they really look that similar, but I think they both look amazing, yeah. like in their own right. And yeah, the visuals are really, really good. Yeah. Um, there's not too much I can say detailed about the descri- the you know the animation, but. There's some shots that are really awesome. Like in the trailer, you can see the shot of them running over the rooftop with the big moon in the background. Yeah, that shit's fire. And they're like jumping, you know, yeah. through the silhouette of the moon, and it just looks sick. There's a shot that we didn't talk about of the turtles climbing up an escape exit with a billboard in the background oh, lighting them up. And we you did see, talk about that. You I see think. each turtle like climbing up. They're they're climbing up a building one by one. And they're to the right of the screen, and there's a big, like, light-up Blade Runner-type billboard in the back, like, lighting them up. And it's gorgeous. It looks so good. There's also um, a super kick-ass shot of uh, the Turtles do a superhero landing, like a team landing. Oh, dude. And fucking Leonardo's in the lead, and he cuts out of this net. Yeah. And he's got his fucking katanas out. Yeah. Is that the one on the rooftop? No, I that's they when they, twice. they come through the through the water and then they right. land. Yeah, that's the one that I'm talking about. That one's about. fucking sick. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got his katanas out, dude. And, like, when they initially do the superhero landing on the rooftop for the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And they got the fucking white eyes. I'm like, yeah. oh, dude, this is going to be yeah. sick. Yeah, so the animation is gorgeous. Um, and that kind of goes without saying if you've seen the trailer. But, um, and... The other thing I really loved is the characters. Yeah. So this is the first movie that I think accurately 
portrays the characters with heart and respect and they each feel different and have their own quirks and have their own you know personality traits and you know Raph is obviously um he's not the leader Leonardo's the leader um, <laughs> surprise, surprise and in this movie you actually get that vibe which yeah. is crazy town Leo is like he's basically like a he's very straight like he's, he's straight very he doesn't like lying to uh, Splinter. He's very like by the books, good, uh, you know, teacher's pet kind of. And Raph is like the, um, he loves violence and he loves just doing crazy shit. And yeah. uh, there's one line where they're like, uh, we really got to do something about your violence problem, uh, Raph. And he's like, it's not a problem. And then he like goes and goes on a rampage. Yeah, he like flips a truck over. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, and then Mikey is like, you really get the vibe. He's like the jokester. Yeah, he's, um, he's the he feels the youngest too. Like they made him shorter, and he feels like the little brother. That's like yeah. really funny. And then uh, Donatello is like the smart one, and yeah. he's very good with technology. Wears wears glasses. Yeah, and they poke fun at the fact that all Donnie has is a stick. Yeah, and like all the other ones have like nunchucks and katanas and like uh, daggers and he's got a stick yeah and they're like what can we even do with a stick and, <laughs> and they they reference it later in the movie when his stick comes in handy in like yeah. one of the action sequences and um the characters are really well written i liked that april um was their age this yeah. time yeah i like april that too. in the old movies is like 30 and thir- maybe mid 30s like 35 and the turtles are supposed to be teenagers so that kind of gives off a weird vibe like yeah, they wouldn't really like. It makes more sense that they would have a relationship and a connection in this movie than it does like yeah. in the other movie. Yeah, they both you know kind of want the same thing, and there's a big theme about acceptance in the movie. And um, April is, uh, she's a journalist and she writes for a school newspaper, and they talk about her backstory and how she um she threw up on the school like news broadcast and people call her um puke girl puke girl yeah yeah and um so she wants to be she wants to find a good story to write about so she can get her name in the paper and like have people accept her and stop calling her puke girl and the turtles um they think that like humans hate them and every experience they've ever had with humans was really bad and splinter also had a really bad experience so he teaches them that like humans are bad you can't stay down here in the sewers you can't interact with them so they want to be accepted and then you find out um like when you meet superfly that he also wants acceptance and it's a big like very cohesive theme there and you know they find out that they they want to stop superfly so the turtles can be in the newspaper and people will know their heroes and they'll get you know, they won't be like scared of them. And they'll be respected them. and they'll be appreciated. And April wants to do the same thing from the reporter side. And like they go try to stop Superfly and they can't do it. And they're like, well, we're doing this for the wrong reason. I think it was Leonardo. And he was like, we're doing this like for our gain. We're not doing this just to help. Yeah. And uh, he was like, well, because what happens is they try to stop Superfly and then they go into like Times Square basically and this is going to be spoilers by the way we're going to we're yeah, going to go I, in depth I figured on this. that out once you started describing the plot of the movie yeah I, I, it's hard to talk about a movie in detail without yeah. you know talking about spoilers I'm not going to intentionally spoil things but if I do I do um, yeah. if he dies but they, he dies they go try to stop Superfly and then they they're in the middle of Times Square and it's like um, you know, all these news reporters are saying how the turtles are attacking Times Square and everyone thinks that they're villains. And then they're like, well, just because they don't think we're heroes doesn't mean, like, we can't be. Like, we still need to do this and we still need to help. And yeah. whether whatever they think about us or not, it's still the right thing to do. So then that's when they actually start, like, getting shit done. <clears throat> and when when it's not for their personal gain and it's more for that's just, just it's the right are. thing to do. Yeah. And it's who they are. So then you get this, um, I'm jumping around, but uh, the finale is really great. Um, yeah. It's in like time, what I would assume is Times Square in New York, and Superfly has like combined into this 
uh, huge amalgamation of animals and creatures and um, mutants, I guess. And there's this fucking great scene where um, they need to get this, like, basically an antidote into the back of Superfly, like Godzilla style. Yeah. And uh, it sort of reminded me of the scene from Amazing Spider-Man 2 where uh, the New York, the citizens of New York, like, move oh, their cranes, the cranes so over. he can swing through. And it's like the moment the city accepts them as heroes and, like, helps them and embraces them. Yeah. And also, like, the... Uh... The Spider-Man 2. We found this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was sick. That's um, Toby Maguire's brother. I know. Yeah. That's know. so... We found this. <laughs> 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 Fucking <Dude>. dweeb. <laughs> um, that was so funny. Yeah. So, the city, like, finally started to embrace him as heroes and... Uh, they hand it to the pizza guy and he's like I got this and well, then he starts fucking running well he uh the fucking the turtles are they're locked down they can't do anything yeah and Splinter's got the vial and his like his leg's fucked up he can't do anything and he sees a human walking towards him and he gets he's like gets so scared cause anytime he's encountered a human they've tried to like attack him or they've freaked out and then the guy just looks at him and he's like do you need do you need help mm-hmm. and then Splinter's like yeah, yeah. And he fucking grabs a vial and he's like, "I got." Which this. was a big moment for Splinter too, because he also thinks that humans are evil. Yeah, and like it was both sides accepting each other. Yeah, you know, and that was a great moment. Yeah, Splinter being a reflection of Superfly too. Yeah, was was cool. Yeah, um, so they the pizza man like runs down the street with the vial and they like hand it off like a, um, like a what are, what are they called, the races. Fucking oh, like a I don't know some like a baton some just a race yeah. Um, and they're like handing it off one by one to get it down the street to the turtles. And there's like this great scene where the turtles like break free of Superfly and they're all on him in like different spots and they're like throwing it to each other and it's just fucking it's awesome. Yeah, it's like a great fuck yeah moment. Um, so. We got to we got to the finale, but there was a bunch of stuff we skipped over that I want to talk about. Well, um, the, I can tell you this. This will kind of take us back to the beginning. There's a, a scene that I got emotional with. Which one? Um, but at the very beginning of the movie, they the turtles come out and they they do this grocery shopping and like a really cool little montage. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, you know, they're watching. There's an outdoor movie like a couple blocks from here. We can go check it out. And everyone's and they're watching Ferris Bueller and they're talking about how cool like high school would be and mm-hmm. how that they would have friends and and do all this cool stuff. Yeah. And Leo goes, "All right, we really gotta get back." And they're all getting into the sewer and they look back up as they're all getting down, and they see everyone out watching Ferris Bueller like having fun, mm-hmm. and then they just like drop their heads. Yeah. And, and the last one the like doesn't want to stop watching. Like he he like slowly shuts the sewer and yeah. like stays as long as he can and and then they just like walk home through the tunnels like in silence yeah and that was really sad and also going back to how well written the characters are in <clears throat> the 90s movies they make the turtles like morons like <laughs> yeah they don't have like they're not really smart they're just kind of idiots yeah and in this movie they took it more from like dumb teenagers that just like pizza to these these you know, teenagers that feel real and have their own problems and kind of made it really sad that, you know, no one accepts them and they have to hide in the sewers and they want to be normal and they want to go to high school and just do normal things and they can't. And I thought that that was like really smart to add into the story. And it's something that I never really thought about before. You always think of the turtles as just like cool. Yeah. As just, they're just fucking, they know karate and they got cool weapons and they eat pizza and they're fucking sick. Yeah. And that's it. And in this movie, it added a lot of layers to them, like just wanting to be kids and wanting to be normal and not being accepted. And I really liked that. That was, yeah. that was awesome. Um, and the comedy's great. I'm jumping around. I'm trying to. I didn't take yeah. notes or anything, so I'm like, kind of just comedy, thinking of whatever comes to yeah, my head. But the comedy works for the most part. I think that there's 
there's a couple of very modern like jokes like modern stuff that doesn't land too well i think it's mainly donatello that does those from what i remember mm-hmm. um but i mean you're you're talking about like two or three jokes max in yeah. the whole movie and, and obviously there's jokes that are more like kitty but i laughed a lot throughout yeah it's a very bacon, like consistently funny movie yeah um there's not a lot i can like um like say like that i remember because it's a lot of very quick like people talking over each other comedy yeah and um it is very modern the comedy is very uh you know like what's happening now they reference tiktok and stuff like that and some people may not like that but i actually think it's a positive for yeah. the same reason that i said i enjoy the 90s movies because they feel like 90s they they feel like a product of their time it's like getting in a time machine and going back to the 90s and yeah. this movie is going to feel like that in 30 years when you come back to this one it's going to feel like yep this is a 2023 movie like yeah. that's what it's going to feel like and I think that's a good thing yeah. because some movies and some you know writers and directors they try to make their movies timeless which in turn just makes it forgettable and bland yeah. and I think really committing to you know the time that we're in can give it a lot of charm and make people make it in turn timeless yeah. it's 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 weird like if you try to make it timeless it won't be but if you embrace the time you're in it can be yeah you know like back to the future is very 80s extremely <laughs> yeah. 80s yes sir with the clothes they're wearing the music they're listening to they weren't trying to make a timeless movie with that yeah but they did because they committed to the bit of the 50s and the 80s yeah and so i think it's a positive honestly i think that it's it's what the turtles needed um like I said, they these characters like I actually care about them now. Like yeah. I care about those characters in the movie, and I couldn't give a shit about the ones in the '90s because, like yeah. I said, they're they're hollow, just just numbskulls. They they don't have any traits. Yeah, um, and all the all the voice actors too for the turtles and for April did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked Jackie Chan as Splinter. Splinter. Yep. They also they changed Splinter up instead of just being this like kung fu master to where he's like an actual dad. Yeah. Which I could see some people not liking that. But much. still knows fucking kung fu I mean, and he can still, still beat your ass. Piece. He's still piecing guys. Around. Dude, the scene where he saves them when they're getting milked. Yeah. That was fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, it felt like a Jackie Chan fight sequence. Too. Yeah. It felt very improvised, like he's panicking and just like doing shit and it's working Incorporating out. the environment. Yeah, it's yeah. Every, everything Jackie Chan like has Feels done. like you're watching Police Story. Yeah, he's fucking doing that. Yeah. And that's so cool. It's another layer of like, we mm-hmm. realize this is fucking Jackie Chan. Yep. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the only person I didn't really like that much was Ice Cube as Superfly. And it's nothing he did. Yeah, but, we talked about this. Yeah, it's they, just too noticeable that it's ice cube it would have been fine but they they kind of fisted in some lines of him doing and saying like hip-hop lines yeah well, like he busts in on the turtles and he goes six in the morning polish knocking on my door yeah and i'm like what the fuck it's like that didn't even make sense yeah. why'd you just say that that doesn't yeah. I know what you're referencing, but why did you, the character, just say that? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Why at are you? All. You're you're in the middle of an action sequence. Yeah. What are you doing? It would have been fine if it, if they just had him voice him, and then yeah, obviously everyone's gonna know it's Ice Cube because it's fucking Ice Cube. Yeah. So just don't have him say. It's that just stuff. a little distracting hearing someone. The same thing when Seth Rogen plays a character. It's just distra- It's not like they're doing anything wrong. It's just distracting having someone so famous that you can instantly tell. You can picture Ice Cube in a in a in a booth like doing the voice acting. Yeah. And you could have instead tried to got get someone like Mahershala Ali that can give a great performance and be an intimidating character, but he doesn't have such a distinct voice where, you know, like he plays um Uncle Aaron in Spider-Verse. Yeah. And he also plays someone else uh he plays the guy in Invincible. And, like, I didn't even recognize that that was him in Invincible. He can really alter like, his voice. Yeah, he can do characters and do voices, yeah. and we wouldn't recognize that it's him, but you'd still get a great performance. Yeah, I would have preferred something like that. Yeah, if you watch him in 
in Moonlight versus him in the Green Book. Yeah. They're very Dude, vastly that's a fucking different actor people. right there. Yeah, that, I that's really, a fucking I hand. really hope he doesn't leave Blade because he's, I think he's threatened to because that movie's a disaster. Dude, but if I was him, I would. I would. Like, I hope he He's a better man than me. Yeah, I hope, I hope to God he doesn't, but like, I'd be like, guys, I'm a Herschel of fucking Ali. Yeah, you guys are dicking around wasting my time. <laughs> I know I'm on the payroll, but yeah. I can go accept 17 other checks. Yeah. Um, and I liked what they did with the villains, because the main villain is Superfly, but he also has this like legion of mutants that work for him and like have the same plan. And the turtles kind of convert them and join, you know, get them to join the good side. Yeah. Join the light side. And then they all help try to take out Superfly at the end, which I think was just really cool. It was. And it also gives us more cool characters to play around with, like, in the in future. In the future, yeah. The Gecko, played yeah. by Paul Rudd. Really Instead sick. of just being like everyone else and killing off the first villain that you fucking yeah. see. Yeah. You know, you, you incorporate these characters in cool new ways. Mm-hmm. Um... I was trying to think of some of the jokes that I really liked, but I liked I, the bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, the, <laughs> and then Mikey starts fucking twerking. Yeah, the bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah. Bacon, bacon, egg, bacon, egg, and cheese. The Aki way. Yeah, <laughs> with the bev. With the be- can't forget the bev. <laughs> A lot um, of it is either them being fucking ridiculous. They're being fucking kids, dude. or that's what's so be- charming about it. Yeah, or them like being like super awkward. Yeah, of like our dad isn't a giant rat. Yeah, and she's like, that kind of makes me feel like he's a rat. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, I see you in there. And then Leo goes, I think she can see us. <laughs> Dude, it's really fucking funny. Like, yeah. it's it's not anything, like, there's no standout joke that was yeah. like, Dude, that's the magnum opus. Yeah. But it's like, most of everything they say is really funny. And yeah. there's so much chemistry between them because they all recorded together in, yeah. the, in the booth. It was a group recording, so... It's it it doesn't feel like one person's giving all their lines and then like another person goes off by themselves and records lines. It feels like they're all there because they are. Yeah. And they're all kids and they all feel like kids and talk like kids and there's so much charm about it. And there's yeah. the running joke about Splinter telling that telling the turtles that the humans are gonna milk them. Yeah. And they're, they're gonna like, milk Why do you keep saying blood? that? Like why do you, why does it always go straight to milking? Yeah. And then they end up like, getting milked. Have, yeah. and he's no, like, What is that nipples. machine? Is that a milking machine? And then it goes to the label that says Milkmaster two thousand. <laughs> is that a milking machine? <laughs> yeah, dude. It's really fucking funny. I fucking love that movie. Yeah. I think I've got it at like a four and a half. I gave it a four and a half. But um like there's it's, also it's like badass moments. There's there's an action yeah. sequence. You know the action sequence Where when they transition when the, it transitions. It's like oh one steady God. take that moves to the right, but it's like cutting in between different scenes. But it's like match. It's matching up. Yeah, it's so creative. They've got to cool. take down like four different bosses. Yeah, and it plays through them raiding four different like layers, mm-hmm. and it cuts between. It intercuts. Like, one them. is. Ralph, one's Leo, one's Donnie, and then one's Michelangelo. Yeah. And it cuts through them doing these, like, the same actions, basically. Mm-hmm. And it's so fucking cool. Yeah. Edited and just... Yeah. And they'll do... They'll tweak, like, some of the... Like, when it cuts to Ralph, he'll fucking, like, body slam a guy. And then it'll cut to Donatello, and he'll, like, like smack a guy around with a stick. Yeah. But it plays, like, one one turtle's doing it all. Yeah. It's... It's really great action too, and also the there's a trailer that shows this scene, so you've probably already seen it. But when they first get introduced at the beginning of the movie, when they're going out on their grocery run, they have these intros where you don't see their eyes, and it's like Ralph's fucking licking his uh his little yeah dude. um his dagger, side. and it's just fuck. And Mikey's like pulling the nunchucks, and like it's fucking sick. <laughs> it's it's cool. There's something about those turtles. They're that just fucking cool get me little fellas, dude. Dude, they're yeah. Every time they step on the screen, I'm like, God, dude. Dude, this would have been like the one turks. of my favorite movies if I was a kid watching this. Yeah. Um, but even not as a kid, as a grown ass man, it's I gave it a four and a half. It's my number five of the year. That's, I put it over Dead Reckoning. <laughs> I fucking crazy. like this movie yeah. a lot. Yeah, I agree with that. I love Dead Reckoning. Yeah, and, and I could be alone on this. I don't. It's early, so like, there's not a lot of reviews. Yeah. It seems like everyone likes it, but not everyone like loves it. Yeah. 
I love it. I it's think also it's got a great. really cool uh, hip hop soundtrack that I'm, it finally embraced the I'm New sure York, yeah. like the New York inspiration of the music, and they play like, um, uh, oh, what is it? A uh, tribe called Quest. Yeah, and they play a bunch of different like New York inspired hip hop, and the score too. The score was made by Trent Risner and Atticus Ross, who does a lot of um, David Fincher scores. Yeah, they did social network and girl with the dragon tattoo and they're big time um you know composers and the score it's very like uh it's very different throughout it doesn't stick to like one tone but there's several different like motifs like there's and the fight sequences it's very loud and like aggressive but then in the scenes where they're like talking and in a lot of the more like emotional moments they play this like synth like tangerine dream type yeah, this music like chime that would um, play. Let me st- stuff like this. Yeah. This is from the score. This is the score to the movie. It's fucking yeah. awesome. And they'll yeah. be they'll be like having a realization. You know, it's like Stranger Things. Yeah. It's yeah, fucking it sick. Really cool. It's a great score, it's a great soundtrack. It's hysterical. The the action is great, the animation's great. It has great themes to latch on to. Yeah. The villain's interesting. Like, there's... I don't know what how you could watch it and not like it, to be honest. Yeah. And they have a really cool scene, too, where they, they encounter Superfly for the first time, and they hang out. Yeah, they... They so, hang out together. Yeah, so they're kids, and they have April in their ear. There were, like, someone can hear them on the... Hear April on the phone, and she's like, all right, there's Superfly, like, kill him. Like, take him down. Uh, yeah. Like... He, there he is and they're, they've they never done this before and they're just like they don't know what to do and and Superfly thinks that they're on his team because they're mutants and there's never been like good mutants before it seems like he just yeah. assumes since they're mutants that they're gonna work together and they just like they go to a bowling alley <laughs> like they yeah. starts hanging out with yeah, Superfly and it's and it's so like, funny and it's like, like <laughs> Leo's like all right, so just like if we're being silly, he's like just getting silly for a second. Hypothetically, <laughs> if we weren't a hundred percent on killing all the humans <laughs> and weren't really on board with your plan, it was like that means I y'all ain't y'all as cool as I thought. I, y'all thought like you half were. as cool as I thought you. And were. That has to go nuts on you. <laughs> and they're like, like well, that's good because we agree with your plan. <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we hate the humans. Kill all yeah. The humans. Yeah. yeah, it's so fucking funny. Just, just talking about it now. I just. <laughs> Talking about it now, I just want to go rewatch it. Yeah, and it's crazy that you have like Jackie Chan and Ice Cube, and like the kids are the big standout. Like their chemistry Dude, they, is awesome. And they're not like popular actors either, and I, it really feels like yeah. that. It feels like they hand, they did hundreds of auditions and like handpicked the best Leo and the best Raph, yeah. and like it feels like it was done with care and not just phoned in. Like. Who are the biggest four child actors right now? Let's force them into doing this yeah. just because people know who they are. Like they could have gotten what's that kid from uh, Good Boys and Doctor Sleep um, and Room? Oh, he's like the biggest kid God. actor. Yeah, what is his name? I don't remember. Oh, is it Dustin. Ah, uh, or Jerry? It's not Jerry. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's not fucking Jerry. <laughs> What a dumb fucking <laughs> idea. Um, <laughs> you don't know what it is either. <laughs> no, it's not fucking Jerry. It could be anything. <laughs> All right, hold on. It's probably close. It's Good probably boys. close, dude. Uh, his name is Jacob Tremblay. <laughs> Jacob and Jerry, come on. You're going to act like I'm far off? Uh... Oh shit! Wait, oh, I was just looking at the cast of Good Boys, and um, this guy showed up, and I was like, oh, I remember him. But then I was, I was looking at his picture, and I was like, wait, that kid looks familiar. And then I realized he's Raph. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he plays Raph, like. So it wasn't the lead of Good Boys. I was making a joke like, let's just get the lead of Good Boys. Yeah. I didn't realize he was in Good Boys, but he was really funny. Yeah, he was really good. Yeah, he was really funny in Good Boys. Um, 
But yeah, uh, I forgot where I was going. But oh yeah, the 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 cast feels very like handpicked and yeah. like taken care of and not not just forced into you yeah. know how a lot of people cast nowadays they're just like oh get the rock yeah like don't yeah. worry about casting the best character the best actor for the character just get the yeah. guy who's gonna whoever, sell the tickets yeah whoever puts asses in seats let's yeah get him in here. yeah so honestly if I see this again which I will probably opening night Thursday um and I like it as much I might give it five I was I was thinking about Dude, bumping it up there too. This is just really one of those things. Analyze. Like I said, maybe it's just m- my taste, but I don't give a fuck if it's my taste. I yeah. just love it. Yeah. I fucking love it. Yeah, I wonder. I really want to like analyze some of the comedy because everything else is there, and there's a lot that like they do fast that you don't really catch on the first watch. I got a question for you. What's that? Is there any world where you see this a couple more times and it overtakes across the Spider Verse? No. You just said you might well, give it a five. Well, I've got Across the Spider Verse at the five. There are two five star movies. Um, I think I don't, with, I don't know with Across is so like as, as soon as you ask me that, I shut it down. But I don't think that's I, a silly thing. It's to not. Say. It's not because Across Across isn't as rewatchable, in my opinion. It's, it's a half of a movie. It's not. It doesn't feel as fulfilling. Either. It's half of a movie. Yeah. Like it's a like, great half of a movie, you but get it's half. a lot. Like you're consuming great content, but it doesn't feel like a completed loop. Now, if I said Into the Spider Verse, fuck you. That's yeah, no, not, not even a discussion. But let's get real. Across, I, guess, I could. I think I have Across at a four and a half, really? which I have Turtles at. So, I mean, Turtles could make the make the jump, which. We're going to be alone. If that's our take, and, and if we end up putting Turtles higher, I'm not expecting anyone else to do that. Because people, li- I think people like Spider Across more than I do, and they're going to like Turtles less than I do. Yeah. So it's probably just a me thing, but if you know, said, I'm like, which one, if you could only own one, you have to choose between Across or Turtles, and, like, that's the only one of those movies you can watch ever again... Probably might be going to Turtles. I mean, it's fucking yeah. sick. I'd have to watch it again to tell for sure. But as of right now, I could see myself doing that. Yeah, I could see myself doing that. But yeah. people putting it at a three and a half, I feel like it's still kind of, kind of weird. Like I get that I like it more than the average person, but I can I see left that first time and saw it a four, I didn't put it at a four and a half. I could see like a three and a half for sure. If if you're not really into the characters and it's not really your thing, and you just watch it and you're like. It's got good animation, and it's like it's it's got a lot of heart and character, and like it was sweet, and I enjoyed it. Like I can see that. I, I don't think that's wrong. I just think me personally, it's <clears throat> everything I would want is in it. Yeah. So, you know, I got you. Well, I mean, we'll have to see. I'm excited to watch it again, though. Me too. I want to get our tickets for Thursday. Hell yeah. We should see like a ten o'clock showing, so there's no fucking runny nose, fucking, fucking vanilla wafer eating shits. I might make Logan go watch it with us. You should. She would love it. She would if she gave it a chance. She'd yeah. like it. Yeah. There's nothing not to like. Yeah. I mean, fucking Ray. Post Filet. Malone's in it. Ray Filet alone. Ray Filet. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you on, singing man. that shit, man? Just, just say, say your name. name. Oh, Ray Filet. <laughs> <laughs> I will say they did that fucking uh three non-blonde song and they did like a pop version of it three non-blonde yeah i don't know what that is that fucking song that played when they were in the van the van chase i don't know if i remember the song oh while we're talking about music um there's a part where uh one of the turtles gets like knocked into a car and accidentally hits the radio and then they start playing uh ninja rap Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which was hilarious. Yeah, I love, I love that, that reference. <coughs> gotta, gotta pay your respects. Yeah, got to. What the fuck, dude? What's their problem? That Who guy's being a jerk. There? There's some random guy. I don't know. I was just making sure it wasn't my car. I mean, my car's out there too, dude. No, we're fine. Okay, we're good. Just we're some all asshole. Set. Yeah, it's just some fucking dickhead. Yeah, dude. Fucking turtles is awesome. Yep. And that pretty much sums oh it all up. fuck, we forgot. We never talked about Barbie. 
Because what did? happened was, I was going to do an Oppenheimer episode and then a Barbie episode and split it up. So we had enough time to talk about either without it feeling too jammed. And then we never recorded the Barbie one. Nice. So we need to talk about it real quick. Yeah. Um, I actually don't have a ton to say about it. It's woke propaganda. It's, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you if, you if you say that. Uh, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I gave it a four. I thought it was, which might be too high. Maybe I'll lower it to a three and a half. But for me, um, I liked it. I think the set design is great. And it's, I like the music. Ryan Gosling has two songs, which are both fantastic Ryan Gosling is the standout, even if that sounds sexist. I don't care. I'm sorry. He yeah. just is. Like, they did that's a, just a objectively pro, true. Yeah, they did a pro-woman movie, and then Ryan Gosling shows up. I was like, hang on. Yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, the best thing ever. Yeah, hold my drive jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but that's just the truth to me. He was the funniest part of the movie, and he was the standout. Um, it does feel like a little messy to me in terms of like the themes and it also kind of feels like it loses a little bit of its footing in the third act mm -hmm. like it doesn't exact it kind of turns into like because you know the third act is uh barbie spoilers i guess the third act is like the barbies versus the kens and like the the barbies trying to trick them into reverting back to like barbie land instead of ken land and it's just i don't know it i feel like it was more interesting when um it was about like Barbie's learning what the real world is like and Ken like trying to figure out like what patriarchy is and how yeah. he, he thinks horses like run the world and he, <laughs> yeah. it's just really funny and I don't know it yeah and and them like riding through the uh like the beach and everyone looking at Barbie and her not knowing what's going on yeah. because you know and I just thought that was, like, really interesting, like, comparing the two worlds. Like, a, basically a utopia that's, like, perfect, and then comparing where we actually live. And I thought Will Ferrell was really funny. Yeah. And his small runtime. Um, he just played like an idiot, like an idiot CEO. And the yeah. part where she runs over the, um, like, the, the, you know what I'm trying to say, um the rotator thing oh yeah and like they and the ceos get there and they're like oh damn it and they can't they don't yeah. think to go through it or jump over it they just yeah. like they turn stop around at the turnstile and he's like i left my fucking key card upstairs yeah <laughs> yeah um i don't know i thought that was funny and it does feel like it it sort of forgets what it's trying to be a little bit um it doesn't feel as like locked in as other movies with what they're trying to get across, but overall, and they're trying to kind of tackle a lot. Um, like they sort of tackle depression and like negative thoughts and, uh, you know, all the stuff that women deal with. And uh, it, it just kind of feels like a lot sometimes and they don't really give enough time to one of the ideas to really flesh it out. But I thought it was fun and I thought it was funny and enjoyable thought ken was really funny yeah mojo dojo casa house yeah that, that was that's that's fucking gold yeah it was good i stuff. um i liked it too uh i gave it uh i gave it a three and a half just because i feel like a lot of the laughs that i got from the movie came from ken and will ferrell yeah and a lot of the stuff that involved just like margot robbie as barbie i didn't think was like super funny um so it wasn't quite as funny as I thought it was going to be, and it, it started out strong, and then I agree, it kind of like, fizzles out a little bit. It does. She's you know, spoiler alert for Barbie, but she she kind of um, has these thoughts of death, and she starts to adapt personality traits from the person that's playing with her. And it would be cool to see you know a toy whose life is perfect start to deal with real life emotions, and they kind of do that for a little bit. And then it's like, well, we got to stop Ken. Yeah. I'm like, we, we just got to here. So let's check this out. I feel out like, somewhere. so when I was watching it, Ken going back to Barbie land and telling people what the real world is like and turning it into Ken land or whatever they called it, it, it was funny. So like 
that was what I liked about it was that I thought it was funny the way he was like changing everything and telling people how it is but it didn't feel like right in the story it felt like a deviation um it felt like random and like I wanted something else to happen yeah. I don't know exactly what I wanted to happen but it wasn't that it wasn't him going back to Barbie land while she's gone and like changing everything yeah that wasn't I, it's hard to explain but that's not what I wanted to happen yeah even though I do like I said I do think it's really funny and there's like a montage of them trying to trick the Kens and there's a scene of like one of the Kens <clears throat> explaining the Godfather to a girl and like yeah. that was really funny and uh, it, I don't like I didn't get offended by anything I think that it's good that this Barbie movie is like very sort of feminist and like if there's one movie that's gonna do that I'm like it, it should be Barbie if yeah if you're a man and don't want to like be poked fun at as a man then don't see the barbie movie i think that's pretty obvious well i also like i'm not gonna just watch movies and then not like them because they don't align with me politically yeah like if a movie's good the fucking movie's good yeah like, i don't really care yeah so i thought the set design was good i liked i liked all, obviously all the performances were good margot robbie's a fantastic actress yeah ryan gosling is a fantastic actor um everyone did a good job and i love the musical numbers it's just it wound up not being quite as funny as i thought it was gonna be and a lot of the jokes that they initially tried to play like i feel like didn't land very well for me. yeah it it wasn't as like tight as i expected it to be with greta gerwig directing yeah. it um sort of like I know it's hard to compare the two, but how Lady Bird feels very tight and like the themes are very clear and fleshed yeah, out. It feels a little bit more muddled. Yeah, this one feels like a little bit sort of like she bit off a lot and didn't really do everything with it. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I just feel like it wasn't fully fleshed out well enough. Um but you know, it's fine. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I'd probably get it on Blu-ray. I'm not 100% sure. Probably, like, used secondhand, I'd get it. Um, but it's not something where I, like, need to get the steelbook, you know, day one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know I'm if I'd ever, like, own it. I think I probably will. I don't think it's something I'd revisit. There often. was a point where I tried to collect every Ryan Gosling movie, which I still may do. I don't know why. There's you a wouldn't. lot of there's stinkers that I just don't want to take up You'd space. You have to get with. the Gray Man. Well, luckily that doesn't have a Blu-ray, so I'm in luck. You weaseled your way out of this yeah. one. <laughs> out of this one, pal. Yeah. If it had a Blu-ray and I had to get it, I'd stop the Ryan Gosling. <laughs> the chain would yeah. break. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I'd, I'm probably going to lower the score, actually, now that I'm talking about it. I thought that... So when we were, like, preparing for Barbenheimer, we said Thursday, Oppenheimer, and then Friday, Barbie, and then Saturday, Oppenheimer again, and then Sunday, Barbie again. And we did Oppenheimer, Barbie, Oppenheimer, but then we didn't go see Barbie again. Yeah. And, like, I expected to. I had planned that ahead of time, but once we saw it, I didn't really feel the need to go see it again. Yeah. If I did, it would just be to see Ryan Gosling perform the two songs again. Yeah. So that kind of speaks to me that it shouldn't be a four. I feel yeah. like I would see, want to see it again. Honestly, I like when we watched it. I instantly once we watched it, I was like, "That was that was cool." And then I instantly started talking like thinking about Oppenheimer again. Yeah. And that could be maybe I don't appreciate it as much because I had Oppenheimer on the mind. Um, no, I don't think that's it. I could have easily enjoyed a movie like right after Oppenheimer. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about Oppenheimer during the movie. It was just like when I walked out. Yeah, when I walked out, I was like, Barbie was cool. And then you walk past I'm the excited, Oppenheimer yeah. poster and you're like, oh. I'm like, oh my God, dude, that fucking movie. Yeah. And then you start thinking about, can you hear the music? You well, come in your pants God. a little bit. Yeah. But you can't tell anyone. Yeah. And someone asks you what that wet spot is on your pants. And then you say, oh, it was from the water when I washed my hands. It splashed up. Yeah. They'll never know. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Know. They wouldn't know that. There's a fucking load in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's. I think that's all we got. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so not a lot of upcoming movies. Uh, things that I'm sort of excited about. Uh, the Last Voyage of the Demeter. That 
that I think movie it looks sick. looks really cool. It, but I could also see it going either way. I could, I could see, see it, it being, being bad. Yeah. But I could see it being honestly like I feel like best case scenario, it's gonna be a three and a half. That's that's what I'm thinking. But like it could be really bad. But I love the rain. I love that it takes place on like a boat in an in, old in a storm. Ship. That's just fucking oh god. god. And then you get an actual like monster looking Dracula, not just yeah. some guy with black hair. Yeah. I think it looks really cool. So um but that's twelve days away. So the next episode, maybe we'll have to talk about something old. Cause there's maybe we need to do a ranking or something. Like yeah. watch uh like watch Jackie Brown and Death Proof and do a Tarantino ranking or something. Yes, yeah, we could tie that loop together and then um, start kind of chipping away at the Yorgo stuff mm-hmm. in preparation for the, the poor Yorgos things. ranking for poor things, right? Yeah, because the Meg Two comes out, but I don't want to do a whole episode on the Meg Two. I don't we think can, we'd have enough to talk about. Yeah, we'll watch it and do it in like our what we watch this week, but not like the main topic of an episode. Yeah. I don't. I'm not going to have enough to say about it. Yeah. So yeah, we'll think of something um, like old to do a, a director ranking or something. I mean, we'll, we're definitely going to keep serving up some pipe and hot film scoop. Pipe and hot, you know, you know what you're going to get. Like, yeah. You tune into the film scoop. Yeah. You know, you know, fucking get some bacon egg and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yep. That's it. Uh. We'll see you guys next week. Yep. All, on all three of you. The film scoop. Film scoop.